Bronn, Mara, and Aki will only survive another couple of months unless they can find people who are willing to share resources with them. At the aggregation, they heard talk of a land three weeks away with great forests and plenty of food. A land we know as Italy. But to get there, they'll have to cross the Alps. At this time, the glaciers of the Alps covered 50,000 square miles, over 40 times their size today. For Mara, Aki, and Braun, their entire lives have been a struggle for survival against the destructive power of ice. But they've never seen that power for themselves until now. For the first time, they have come face to face with an ice sheet. They're looking for a pass that skirts the mountains. But the glaciers move so fast, the landscape is constantly being redrawn and passes disappear. Age Europe were biologically equipped to survive the demands of almost every climate, and yet this wasn't enough. If they were to avoid extinction, our ancestors would have to abandon their hunter gatherer lifestyle and create a more advanced society than had ever existed before. have been traveling for four months. Their journey south has been blocked by the ice of the Alps. Now they're heading east into modern-day Austria. Europe at the time was so barren and empty that there were fewer humans than there are chimps or gorillas today species we regard as endangered. With population levels so low, each new life is highly valued. Mara is two months pregnant. The news is welcomed by Braun and Aki, the child's father. But traveling with a pregnant woman is going to make their journey even more difficult. They urgently need to find other people.
Their experience of the aggregation has taught them not to expect too much from strangers. As the climate's gotten worse, clans have become more insular. Bands of hunters are competing for the same resources, jealously guarding what little they have. Sage Europe, people knew no other way to live than this. For hunter-gatherers, territory was everything. <laughs> Today, the hunter-gatherer lifestyle has all but disappeared. The Hadza are one of the most traditional tribes in the world. Living in small, family-based groups, they rely each day on whatever animals the men manage to hunt and whatever roots the women manage to gather. They eat what they find. There's no concept of stockpiling food in case of shortages. It's very easy to look at hunter-gatherer societies, which are so rare. Nowadays, they make up less than 0.1% of the world's population and think this is something kind of backward or unusual. But in fact, we've got to remember that all over the world, this is what humankind has done for 90% of its history. And actually, it makes perfectly good sense. It's a very rational way of living. People can feed themselves very well on a relatively small amount of sort of hours work per day. You can't support many people in a small area. Groups never get too big. They never reach 100, 200, 300 people together. And looking at hunter-gatherer societies across the world, you often find that the compromise of around 30 people. That's the number of people you can usually sustain in one camp before the group gets too big and unwieldy. Anthropologists think this is probably the scale at which humans lived for over a hundred thousand years. In hunter-gatherer groups which never grew larger than 30. For most of human existence, it doesn't seem that anyone anywhere passed the level of living in very small hunter-gatherer bands. But maybe there was no incentive to do that, because when the living is good, it's a perfectly good way of living. Perhaps it's only when worsening circumstances push you into a corner that you have to find uh, another way out. Sage Europe, there were resources available, but they were beyond the grasp of hunter-gatherers. Aki, Bran, and Mara have heard stories of mammoths, but they've never seen one before. They were rare in the northern hills. Archaeologists believe that mammoths were too dangerous for our ancestors to hunt. Instead, they'd have scavenged the carcasses of any that died naturally. The travelers can do nothing but walk by a wonderful source of food. Aki, Mara, 
and Braun have eaten barely anything in the last week. They're facing starvation. Skyman! Wungot! But when they do find food, they need to be careful. In their own land, they knew what to eat and what to avoid. Here, the tasting of an unfamiliar mushroom is an act of faith. They should try just a small piece and wait to see their reaction to it. But Aki's hunger overrides his sense of caution. Since leaving their camp, the three travelers have covered over a thousand miles and reached the modern day Czech Republic. But they won't be able to go much further. The mushrooms have given Aki food poisoning. Mara is powerless to help him. run out of options. They're exhausted, lost and alone. Or so they think. For several hours, a hunting party has been tracking them, keeping their distance. But now, they're taking advantage of Aki's sickness to move in. Hey, go, go. The three travelers are being taken away. They don't know where or why. They have little option but to give in to their captors and await their fate. are being taken to a camp. But it's unlike any camp they've ever known. They are used to temporary sites of three or four teepees. By comparison, this is a city. Three travelers have been brought to a valley in Moravia in Central Europe, to the first permanent settlement in human history. Today, the same wide valley betrays no sign of its past. Vineyards have been planted here at Dolny Vestunica and at Pavlov, two of the most important Ice Age settlements in Europe. <laughs> 